You're watching Ramping Up Your English on RVTV Voices. This is segment two of episode 54. Now we've learned about the epic journey of the Wolf OR7, but how did he go from having that name to being called or named Journey? Well, when I first saw this book in a Grants Pass bookstore, I thought that Journey was just the name of the book about OR7. Well, it is, but this is the story of how this wolf got to be called Journey. The book is written by Emma Bland Smith and illustrated by Robin James. Its whole title is Journey, the Most Famous Wolf in the West. Now, the story begins simply enough with OR7 leaving his family, the Amnaha Pack. Along with OR7's story, there's a little girl who takes an interest in the journey and follows OR7's progress as he treks across Oregon. Any Southern Oregonian will recognize this scene. OR7 was spotted at Crater Lake National Park, hundreds of miles from where he started. By now, it looks like he's heading south into California. As OR7's fame grew, so did those eagerly following his progress. When he crossed into California, making him the first live wolf there in almost 100 years, radio and TV stations, even national news networks, all excitedly announced this milestone. Many people expressed their joy about this on social media, but some threatened to kill the wolf if it crossed their land. A conservation group decided that OR7 had to become too famous to be killed, so they sponsored a contest to name the wolf. Now, the little girl in the story, named Abby, submitted the name Journey, and shortly after that, she received news that they chose that name. That's when the news of this wolf spread throughout the world. Now made safe by his name and his fame, Journey doubled back and returned to Oregon. This, then a mysterious event happened. A black female wolf appeared, seemingly out of nowhere. Journey and the black wolf mated, and they were last seen raising pups in the Rogue River Siskiyou National Forest. With their new family, Journey and his mate have founded a new wolf pack named the Rogue Pack. The book contains a timeline of events and a list of suggested activities for teachers. The story accurately traces the journey of OR7, later named Journey. But the parts about the little girl named Abby, those came from the author's imagination. Journey, the most famous wolf in the West, is widely available at bookstores and is published by Sasquatch Books. Publisher contact information and the ISBN are available on my website, letscreate.org. That's where you'll also find links to videos you see in this episode. Just navigate to the episode 54 page. In our last video clip, we learned how a wolf born in eastern Oregon made an epic journey through the state and into California, then established a new pack in southern Oregon. The next video is a trailer for a movie about a group of people who retraced OR7's journey through the wild and rural areas of Oregon and California. Let's watch the Wolf OR7 Expedition trailer. A wild gray wolf has set foot in California for the first time in 88 years. So this is the collar, the same type of collar um, that OR7 is wearing. What these collars do is they store information so we can see over the last, say, 24 hours or 48 hours where this animal has been. When wolves moved into Oregon, they moved onto a different landscape, socially, uh, ecologically, and politically as well. We as cattlemen didn't want them here at all to begin with. When we have wolves that are chronic depredators of livestock, I firmly believe that we need to take lethal action on that particular bunch of wolves. When you go out into the wild, you need to be prepared for anything and to be following the tracks of this particular wolf as close as we can, the landscape suddenly became alive in a completely different way. Holy smoke! 
Unbelievable. Are you serious? My first wolf tracks. I know that I saw a wolf go through here. I'm sure, yes. In fact, we heard him. We could hear him out here. Probably him, Alan, out over here. There's a whole art of dealing with wolves that's lost completely because ever since they went on the eradication program, they killed them all. There's been the same journey for wolves that Native people have undergone in the persecution, the extirpation, and the demonizing. It puts us in a kind of an awkward place to where we become the villains. Not all wildlife get a second chance, so I think it's really important that we, we get it right this time. What we are experiencing is a society coming to terms with what does it mean to live again with an animal that we feared and misunderstood so much that we tried to wipe it from the face of the earth.